Now let's learn another important theorem and that is Wilson theorem. A kind of question from remainder is asked uh, wherein we apply the, the result of Wilson theorem to get the answer. So Wilson theorem says that if there is any prime number p, then if p minus 1 factorial is divided by p, then the remainder obtained is p minus 1 or minus 1 also. We can write it as minus 1. So here is the format in which this Wilson theorem can be written. So you can see that p minus 1 factorial can be written as p minus 1 modulus of p or p minus 1 factorial can be written as minus 1 modulus p. That is what I mean by taking remainder as minus 1. That is when p minus 1 factorial is divided by p, then the remainder is minus 1. So let's take an example. So if we have to find the remainder when 36 factorial is divided by 37, so you can observe that 37 is a prime number. And 36 is nothing but 1 less than 37. So if I consider 37 as p, then 36 factorial is p minus 1 factorial. So it's a direct application of Wilson theorem. So we can see that when 36 factorial is divided by 37, then the result is 36 itself or the remainder is 36. So this is a simple example to understand the application of Wilson theorem. Let us understand the extension of Wilson theorem. So this extension is just a modification of what the Wilson theorem says. In this case, for any prime number p, if p minus 2 factorial is divided by p, then the remainder is 1. Or that is, we can write it as p minus 2 factorial is equivalent to 1 modulus of modulo of p. So 1 is the remainder here. So, for example, if we have to divide or we have to get remainder when 39 factorial is divided by 41. So, you can see that if this is p, 41 is p, then 39 can be written as p minus 2 factorial. So, if p minus 2 factorial divided by p, the resultant is 1 or the resultant remainder is 1. Now, this relation can be proved by using the Wilson theorem. So, from Wilson theorem, we know that when for any prime number p, if p minus 1 factorial is equivalent to p minus 1 mod of p. So in this case, this, this is the dividend, this is the remainder and p is the divisor. So I can write p minus 1 factorial equal to p times some constant or some quotient q. So let me assume q is the quotient when p was divided or p minus 1 factorial was divided by p. So we get the remainder as p minus 1. Now one thing we need to observe is that the LHS is a multiple of p minus 1. So RHS would also be multiple of p minus 1. So we can see that this portion is p minus 1 itself. So it will be a multiple of p minus 1. Therefore, this term should also be multiple of p minus 1. Here p is a prime number, hence it cannot be multiple of p minus 1. Therefore, the quotient must be some multiple of p minus 1. So let me assume that q quotient q is some k times of p minus 1. This will ensure that the LHS, LHS is multiple of p minus 1 and hence RHS will also be multiple of p minus 1. So substituting the value of k here, so again I can write this expression as p minus 1 factorial p into k times of p minus 1 plus of p minus 1. Now dividing both the side by p minus 1. So this term is also divided by p minus 1 and so is this term. We can see that p minus 1 factorial when divided by p minus 1 it will be p minus 2 factorial. So this is equal to this 2 will get cancelled so as this. So it is equal to p into k plus 1. Now again we can notice that if this is the dividend and p is the divisor and 1 is the remainder then k will be the quotient or we can say that when p minus 2 factorial is divided by p then the remainder is 1. That is what the extension of Wilson theorem talks about that p minus 2 factorial is 1 mod of p. In the next video we will see some of the examples wherein we will apply the logic of Wilson theorem to get the answer.